Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be covering a quick video on how to rewire your stock 2G fuel pump to get a little bit more voltage to it to help support uh, bigger injectors and keep you from getting fuel cut when you turn up the boost. Uh, big shout out to the guys at the DSM Classifieds on Facebook. Those guys have been really great. They've sent me a bunch of parts so far. Everything has shown up pretty quickly and everything is as expected so if you got a DSM and you need some parts second hand is never a bad thing I recommend 100% jumping on to Facebook and searching for the DSM classifieds and joining the group a bunch of great guys and enthusiasts who can help you when you have your issues I actually just got an oil pan ordered today and that's gonna be here in the next few days and we're gonna be doing a video on how to change that so stick around let's get into this fuel pump okay guys so this is basically everything that you're going to need to do this job it's kind of an easy thing to do the hardest part is going to be connecting all your wiring and passing it through your firewall it's not the biggest job but you do need quite a bit of things here uh, we need some heat shrink tubing we're going to need a 30 amp relay well, a four post or five post i believe doesn't matter uh, we're going to also need an inline fuse. I bought two types of wire. This is some 16 gauge for the ground that we're going to be making. This is some 10 gauge that we're going to use with our inline fuse to run positive power from the battery directly. Uh, we need some male and female connectors, uh, a fuse to go inside of your inline fuse, and I'm going to need some ring terminals. Also, a soldering gun and i brought out my little cordless dremel because we're going to have to make a ground underneath the back seat of the car so first thing we're going to do is pop the hood disconnect the battery and we're going to find a spot to pass through these wires Okay, so now that we've got our battery pulled out, we're also going to want to remove the battery tray, which should have four 12 millimeter bolts on it. So I'm gonna do that real fast. Okay, so once you get your battery tray pulled out, you're gonna notice right down behind this bracket, there is a little place where the wire harness is going through the firewall on the passenger side. And if you can see right, let's see, right there, that white plastic, that is actually the edges of a rubber cap. And that little shiny silver piece sticking out of it, that is my screwdriver I just pushed through from the inside of the car out to the engine bay. And that's where we're going to pass our 12 volt power wire through. I'll show you a quick shot of that from the inside of the car. Okay, so we're in the passenger side here. And if you look right underneath the passenger side footwell, you'll notice that there's a big black bundle of wiring going through. And I just pushed my screwdriver, as you can see, through on the right-hand side to gain access to the engine bay. All right, so now that we have access through the firewall of the car, we're going to make our power wire, which consists of a ring terminal, your 10-gauge red power wire, yeah, about six or eight inches or so from the battery you're going to cut it and you're going to put your inline fuse in and then you're going to add another say seven or eight feet after that and you're going to pass that seven or eight feet of red power wire through the firewall so i'm going to make my wire real fast All right, so now that we have our power wire made, which is right here, everything is butt connected and heat shrinked. We are going to pass it right through the firewall and into the passenger side. All 
All right, so now we have our power wire passed through. What we're gonna end up doing next is popping off this black piece of molding right here, the trim on the bottom of your door, and we're gonna hide that wire between the carpet and the body of the car. All right, so with some mild persuasion, I was able to take the one Phillips head screw on the inside of this plastic trim out and pass my power wire up underneath and slide it underneath my door trim all the way towards the back here. So now that we're at this point, just like in the previous video, we're going to be pulling on this plastic clip and the one behind the driver's seat and lifting the bottom of our seat out. So now with the bottom of our seat out, we're going to take out our four Phillips head screws from the cover of our fuel filter and the one that's on the harness here. We're going to make one wire a ground. So that's gonna have a ring connector on it and we're gonna to have to find a ground in the back of the car and on the other end of that, we're going to connect a female butt connector, which is right here. And we want this to be about 10 inches long, 12 inches long, something along, along those lines, between 10 and 15 inches long. And we also need to make our new connection for our fuel pump relay. So that we're gonna wanna make about seven or eight inches long and connect a male connector on one end and a female on the other. So let's get started on our two wires. All right, so we've made our male and female short wire and we've made our female to ring wire for the ground. So next we're gonna jump over there to that fuel pump and I'm gonna show you what wire you need to cut and how you need to arrange your connections and where to make your ground. Okay, before we get over to the fuel pump, you're going to grab your relay and you're going to take your new ground wire that you just made with the ring on the end of it and you're going to connect that to pin 86, which is on the bottom. You can read what it says. That's going to be your new ground connection. And then the short wire that you made is going to connect to post number 30. So those are your first two connections right there. We're also going to have to connect our power to this and we're also going to have to close the old relay connection to this point right here from the wire we're about to cut. So let's get back into the back seat and I'll show you what to do next. All right, so using your 17 millimeter, we're actually going to disconnect the seat belt right down here at the bottom and that's what our new ground connection is going to be. We're going to hook up our ring to that after we sand all the paint off of it and get nice metal to metal contact. And then we're going to come over here, open up this harness a little bit, and we're going to cut a wire and add our relay in between it. Okay, so I ended up doing some stuff a little differently here. I ended up running my ground connection over here to the bottom of my back seat bracket. And I sanded that down nice and smooth so it was metal to metal, good ground contact. And you hook up that to your relay and your ground ends up being post number 86. And then you go over to post 30 and connect your short pigtail. And sorry for the shaky camera, 
come over to your wire harness here. You're going to find the blue and black cable here. And you're going to snip it. Now once you cut that, this line right here going to the connector to the fuel pump is going to plug in to your new pigtail that you made. And the other one, you're going to put a new female connector on and connect that up to your relay as well. All right, so we've heat shrunk a female connector to the blue and black wire that goes to the plug to the fuel pump. And now we're going to connect our short wire to it. And on the other side that you just cut, the old line that ran from the relay, we're going to put a female connector on this and we're going to connect that to the last pin that we have open on our relay. And once that's done, we're going to go put our battery back in, turn the key on, and listen for our fuel pump to kick on. Alright guys, now for the sake of saving time, it did start to rain where I'm at and my back seat is up on my roof. Uh, I threw my battery back in, I got everything plugged into this relay. All the wires are covered up and shrink, heat shrinked, so we ended up not using the solder. So this is the solderless method, apparently, apparently you're going to hear that at the end of the video. Um, what we're going to do next is plug in our fuel pump, and we're just going to turn the key on. We're going to listen for that little hum as it primes. Alright guys, we got everything put back together, we put the back seats back in. And you can follow me back up front here. Uh, we ended up connecting our new power line right here to the positive terminal. Uh, I went in, I tested it out, car started right up. So now that should be giving us a couple more volts of power straight to our fuel pump, which in turn gives us a little bit more fuel pressure. And like I said, uh, the guys from the DSM Classifieds page on Facebook, uh, one of the gentlemen sold me a nice set of 750cc fuel injectors which I'm going to be throwing in here and dialing in with my MAF translator. Should be an interesting time. Should be a, a good video to watch if you're interested in getting into that mess. I'm going to link a diagram which any one of you can find on uh, DSM forums online as to how to wire up your relay system for your fuel pump. Uh, if you like the video give it a thumbs up. If you got any questions or comments drop them down below. If you want to see the next video, subscribe to keep updated. I'm going to have a couple more projects coming out over the next few days. Uh, we've got a package in the mail yesterday that we're going to be throwing on here. Uh, should be a, a fun weekend. So hope this video helps somebody out out there. And uh, until tomorrow.